In this lesson, we will discuss what molecular formulas are and how they relate to empirical formulas. Please have your periodic table and calculator handy. A molecular formula represents the actual number of atoms in a covalent compound or a molecule. That's why it's called a molecular formula. Ionic compounds do not have molecular formulas. Ionic compounds are always written as empirical formulas. For example, if we had calcium and oxygen in an ionic compound, instead of writing Ca2O2, we would write the simplest ratio of ions that's possible. We would write CaO. And this is how we always write the chemical formula for an ionic compound. Because molecular formulas are for covalent compounds, we will be looking at element combinations that are mostly nonmetals. Molecules, or covalent compounds, have both empirical and molecular formulas. However, sometimes they are the same, and sometimes they are different. So for the molecule water, H2O, that's its actual formula. However, it is also empirical because it is the smallest whole number ratio of atoms that's possible. The molecule glucose has a molecular formula of C6H12O6. This is its actual chemical formula. The subscripts in this chemical formula can be reduced to a smaller whole number ratio, CH2O. That would be the empirical formula for glucose. So the molecular formula and the empirical formula here are different. What's interesting is that the molecular formula for formaldehyde is also CH2O, and its empirical formula would also be CH2O. So two molecules could have the same empirical formula. We are going to be looking at word problems where we have to determine the molecular formula. We are going to be comparing molar masses of the empirical and molecular formulas. So we're going to need the molar mass of the molecule, and we're going to divide it by the molar mass of the empirical formula. This answer should be a whole number, and we're going to multiply the subscripts by this whole number. Before we do some practice, let's look at how we manipulate subscripts in order to go from a molecular formula to an empirical formula. In examples A and B, we have two molecular formulas that are given. We can take the subscripts in letter A and divide them all by 2. That will give us a smaller whole number ratio. C4H5NO. This is the empirical formula for caffeine. In letter B, we cannot divide the subscripts by a number to make them smaller subscripts. The last subscript is a 1 on the oxygen, and that's the smallest subscript that is possible. For this molecule menthol, the empirical and the molecular formulas are the same. In the word problems that we're going to be looking at, we're going to try to go from the empirical to the molecular by determining a number that we can multiply the subscripts by. In this first example, we have a compound with an empirical formula that has been given. And then we're told that the molar mass for the compound is 116.1 grams per mole. Using that information, we'd like to come up with the molecular formula. So what we need to do is compare the molar masses of the empirical and the molecular formulas so we can find a number to multiply our subscripts by to give us the molecular formula. Let's start with the molar mass for the empirical formula. Carbon has a molar mass of 12.01 grams per mole, and there are two carbons in the chemical formula. Hydrogen, 1.01 grams per mole, and there are four hydrogens in the chemical formula. Nitrogen, 14.01 grams per mole, with just one nitrogen in the chemical formula. 
and oxygen 16 grams per mole with just one oxygen in the chemical formula. The total is 58.07 grams per mole. This is the molar mass that we're going to compare to the 116.1 grams per mole given in the problem. Compare 116.1 to 58.07 and the answer is about 2. So we're going to take all of our subscripts and multiply them by 2. C2H4N1O1. Multiply all the subscripts by 2 and we get C4 H8 and 2O2. That is the molecular formula. You can always go back and double check this molecular formula, find the molar mass for the molecular formula, and see how it compares to the 116.1 grams per mole given in the problem. It may be a little bit off due to sig figs, but it should be pretty close to 116.1 grams per mole. In this next example, it's broken down into two parts. First, we are going to find the empirical formula for the compound. And once we have that, we can compare the molar mass to the molar mass of the molecular formula given in part B to come up with the molecular formula for the compound. Remember from our previous discussion on empirical formulas, if we assume we have 100 grams of the compound, our percents become our masses. These masses need to be converted to moles so we can come up with the subscripts in our empirical formula. Once we have our moles, we're going to divide by the smallest number of moles, and we can see that we have two times as many oxygen as carbon and two times as many fluorine as carbon. This makes our empirical formula CO2F2. Once we have that, we can find the molar mass for CO2F2 and compare it to the 82 grams per mole. That's the molar mass for the molecule and see uh, what our molecular formula is. So when we add up all of the molar masses for CO2F2, we get 82.01 grams per mole. Now when we compare the molecular formula molar mass to the empirical formula molar mass, we see that they are the same. This means that the empirical and the molecular formulas are the same. And finally, we have a problem here where we need to find both the empirical and the molecular formulas. So remember, the molar mass doesn't come until the very end when we're trying to find the molecular formula. So we're going to set aside the 92 grams per mole for right now. First, we need that empirical formula so we can find the molar mass for the empirical formula to compare it to the 92 grams per mole. So we're going to use the 0.606 grams of nitrogen and 1.390 grams of oxygen. Remember, to find the empirical formula, we can't compare the grams. We have to compare the moles to get our subscripts. So convert our grams to moles and then divide the larger one by the smaller one and we see that there are two oxygens for every one nitrogen. Our empirical formula is NO2. Now for the molecular formula. We're going to compare the 92 grams per mole for the molecular formula to the molar mass for the empirical formula. The molar mass for NO2 is 46.01 grams per mole. Now compare that to the 92 grams per mole given in the problem. The molecular formula is twice as massive as the empirical formula, so we are going to double all of the subscripts. That makes our molecular formula N2O4. So hopefully now you know what a molecular formula is and how to determine it based on the empirical formula. If not, please go back and rewatch this video.